Tina Louise, the actress who brought Ginger to life, stands as the sole surviving member among the original seven castaways of Gilligan's Island. However, behind the scenes is a surprising reality as she harbored deep-seated conflicts with her co-stars, a chaotic relationship that eventually led her out of the show. Join us as we go on a journey through the life of Tina Louise while showing you rare photos of the star herself. Tina Louise, who was born Tina Blacker, came into this world on February 11, 1934 in New York City. When she was just four years old, her parents went their separate ways. Tina grew up as an only child and her mother, Sylvia, who was a fashion model, took on the role of raising her. Meanwhile, her father, Joseph Blacker, initially owned a candy store in Brooklyn and later pursued a career as an accountant. Tina's educational journey took her to PS6, the Scarborough Day School, and eventually Miami University. Louise's journey into the world of entertainment started at an incredibly young age. As she grew older, her passion for performing led her into acting, singing, and dancing. Her mentor on this artistic path was none other than Sanford Meisner, and she honed her skills at the Neighborhood Playhouse School of the Theater in Manhattan. Louise's talent wasn't confined to the stage alone. She also ventured into the world of live television dramas, making appearances in Studio One and Producers Showcase. She had a knack for captivating audiences both on and off the stage. In 1958, Louise ventured into the world of cinema, making her film debut in God's Little Acre. That very year, she earned the prestigious title of World's Most Beautiful Redhead from the National Art Council, a well-deserved recognition for her striking looks and talent. The following year, she starred alongside Robert Ryan in Day of the Outlaw. It didn't take long for Louise to quickly become a sought-after leading lady, sharing the screen with stars like Robert Taylor and Richard Widmark, often taking on more serious and contemplative roles. Louise turned down roles in films like Lil Abner and Operation Petticoat, choosing instead to focus on her career in Broadway and Italian cinema. She left her mark on Italian film with credits in movies like The Siege of Syracuse and Garibaldi, both released in 1960. Returning to the United States, she continued to refine her craft, studying under the renowned Lee Strasberg and joining the prestigious Actors Studio in 1962. Her versatility as an actress shone through as she guest starred on the sitcom The Real McCoys in a role as a country girl from West Virginia. In 1964, Louise embarked on a memorable journey to Gilligan's Island, portraying the iconic movie star Ginger Grant. While this role brought her fame, she eventually grew dissatisfied and concerned about being typecast. She believed it had an adverse impact on her movie career, leading her to abstain from appearing in any subsequent Gilligan's Island sequel movies. There had been rumors and speculations about tensions between Tina Louise and her co-stars like Don Wells and Bob Denver during their time on Gilligan's Island. Still, the exact reason for any discord have never been definitively confirmed. The feud between Louise and Denver reportedly began when Denver spread a rumor about her sneaking her boyfriend into her dressing room. Tina vehemently denied these rumors and was upset that he would spread gossip about her. John Wells, who portrayed Mary Ann, opened up about their rivalry on the set and how Louise distanced herself from the cast and the show after it ended in 1967. Wells shared her perspective, saying that Tina thought she was a movie star and didn't realize that there were seven of them. Louise's refusal to return for the show's reunion film, Rescue from the Gilligan's Island, further highlighted her detachment from the rest of the original cast. Her character, Ginger, was portrayed by Judith Baldwin instead. Nevertheless, Louise maintained a steady acting career after her time on the island, appearing in films like The Wrecking Crew alongside Dean Martin and The Stepford Wives in 1975. She sought to diversify her acting portfolio by taking on darker roles, such as playing a heroin addict in a 1974 episode of Kojak and a harsh corrections officer in the 1976 television movie Nightmare in Badham County. Her television presence remained strong with appearances and productions like Look What's Happened to Rosemary's Baby, SST Death Flight, and a stint on the soap opera Dallas during the 1978 and 1979 seasons. In 1984, she took over the role of Taylor Chapin on the syndicated soap opera Rituals, succeeding Joe Ann Flug. 
Louise continued to grace the silver screen with her talent. In 1987, she co-starred in the Robert Altman comedy O.C. and the Stigs. A few years later, in 1992, she appeared in the independently made satire Johnny Swade, sharing the screen with a rising star, Brad Pitt. Television also welcomed her presence as she played Miss Beck in an episode titled Kelly Bounces Back on the beloved sitcom Married with Children. While Louise declined to participate in the Gilligan's Island reunion television films, she did make brief walk-on appearances on various talk shows and specials dedicated to the show's reunions. Notably, she appeared on Good Morning America in 1982, The Late Show in 1988, and the 2004 TV Land Award show alongside other surviving cast members. In the 1990s, Louise had a heartwarming reunion with her former co-stars Bob Denver, Don Wells, and Russell Johnson in an episode of the hit sitcom Roseanne. Although she didn't participate in the television film Surviving Gilligan's Island in 2001, she remained fond of her role as Ginger Grant, dispelling any rumors of resentment. She expressed her love for the character, especially as it evolved when the show's writers started crafting her role with more depth and complexity. Louise appreciated the show's enduring popularity and the comfort it provided to fans, particularly during challenging times like the COVID-19 pandemic. Tina Louise had a brief romantic relationship with Bo Belinsky, which lasted from July 1962 to August 1962. In 1966, Tina Louise married Lecron, a radio and TV announcer slash interviewer. During their marriage, they welcomed a daughter named Caprice into their lives. Tina and Leigh divorced in 1971. Caprice, following in her family's creative footsteps, became an MTV producer and a novelist. In a charming twist of fate, Tina and Leigh appeared together as a married couple in a 1973 episode of Love American Style. Tina Louise's involvement in the entertainment industry extended beyond acting. She is a member of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences highlighting her significant contributions to the world of film. Moreover, she holds a lifetime membership in the prestigious actor's studio, a testament to her dedication to her craft. Notably, Louise has been a passionate advocate for improving child literacy, putting her beliefs into action by donating a portion of the proceeds from her 2007 book, When I Grow Up, to literacy programs. Additionally, she devoted her time to volunteering at local public schools since 1996, emphasizing the importance of education in young lives. In her literary endeavors, Tina Louise has authored three books showcasing her diverse talents. Sunday, a memoir was published in 1997, providing insights into her personal journey. When I Grow Up 2007 is a delightful children's book that encourages kids to believe in their potential by drawing humorous comparisons to achievements in the animal kingdom. In 2009, she added another children's book to her repertoire, titled What Does a Bee Do? Tina Louise's commitment to education and creativity shines through her work both on and off the screen. Louise's career was a fascinating journey marked by versatility and determination, showcasing her ability to excel in various roles across different mediums. At 89 years old, she is still going strong and occasionally continues to act, with her latest role in the 2019 film Tapestry. Thank you for watching.